Negro VMX here with another week's worth of comic reviews. I got a lot of reviews to handle, so I'm going to try and make them as quick as possible. First, here's some that I didn't get to last week. Amazing Spider-Man 571 gives us another part of New Ways to Die with Anti-Venom playing Havoc with Spider-Man's powers and Norman Osborn coming out on top with a plan to snag Spider-Man with homing bullets. And if that fails, bullseye. The scene between Menace and Norman was interesting, and it led one friend of mine to hypothesize that Menace is Harry Osborn, though I personally disagree. The anti-venom concept is working, believe it or not, and so is the arc. Gonna have to give this one a 7 out of 10. Action Comics 869 was apparently recalled because some of the DC Comics thinks the idea of Superman sharing a beer with his father on the cover is offensive. So they changed it to soda by redrawing the label of the bottle. Badly, I might add. This aside, what's inside is great, with Superman and Brainiac's battle getting more vicious, a final answer to Supergirl's origin, and some pretty big shockers in an arc already full of them. Great art, great story, great pacing, and a solid 8 out of 10. Batman Confidential 21 wraps up the bat and the cat, though Catwoman features very little into the finale, with a cat and mouse game being played between Batgirl and the Riddler. One particular scene when, with the Joker was pretty damn good, and I gotta hand it to the writer to acknowledge that Batgirl would be damn uncomfortable skulking through Arkham Asylum wearing a costume that, well, it's pretty torn up. Funny, exciting, amusing, and, you know, but the one thing is the art, it didn't really do it for me. Everyone looks strangely lumpy and soft to me. I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. Well, finally, this week's books. Amazing Spider-Man 572 is another step up with Norman sliding into his Green Goblin persona like you'd slip into a particularly comfortable pair of shoes. The Thunderbolt's varying reactions to seeing him in costume is interesting. Norman also thinks that Harry's up to something, and so does Peter. But this takes the backseat to the hunting of Spider-Man, Harry being enraged that his father purposely put him in danger. Harry's still lingering anger over uh, for Peter's whole paparazzi thing, and of course, anti-venom. The end seems a bit cliche, but at least it'll lead to a great climax in the next issue. I'm going to say 9 out of 10. Punisher number 62 is an improvement, with the new writer being a bit more comfortable with both dialogue and narrative, though the storytelling and the artwork is, is a little questionable at times. The, uh, the story overall is quite enjoyable, though I wonder if Frank perhaps figured out what was happening to the murdered girls a bit too quickly. One part in particular with a meth addict would have been funny if it wasn't so disturbing, which is just the way I like this series. I'm going to say 7 out of 10 for this one. All-Star Superman number 12 wraps up Grant Morrison and Frank Quality's run, quietly, I'm sorry, quietly's run, in a spectacular way, picking up the epic cliffhanger of Clark's death from the last issue and exploding it into a massive final battle that covers pretty much, well, everything great about comics. The story is over, and I can definitely say that All-Star Superman may well be the greatest 12-issue comic since Watchmen. Easily a 10 out of 10. Batgirl number 3, however, is almost on the other side of the spectrum, being largely forgettable, with the same old boring moral dilemmas, girl-on-girl fights, and bullshit from the first two issues that, you know, that's what they were known for, so this one's no different, I guess. I've stopped caring, and this book is barely worth the 3 out of 10 I'm giving it. Billy Batson and the Magic of Shazam number 2 shows that lightning can strike twice, showing the all-ages charm of the first issue was no fluke. If you like comics that are technically supposed to be for kids but adults will also find great, and if you liked Shazam and the Monster Society of Evil, at least the parts of it that weren't liberal propaganda, then you owe it to yourself to check this one out. Solid 9 out of 10. The Brave and the Bold, number 17, is an interesting Supergirl and Raven team-up that unfortunately delves into a lot of the issues of Supergirl's origin that had already been discounted in her own books and blatantly proven to be false in this week's action comics. The art and dialogue is worth a look, however. Gonna give that one a 6 out of 10. DC Universe Decisions, number 1, had me asking, why? as this sort of let's-see-how-the-DC-heroes-stand-on-the-election thing is a rather uninspired idea, especially considering that the politicians used are merely analogs for real ones. I can't even begin to fathom how this comic got recalled, either. In the end, it was an interesting book, but... And I'll be at least interested in the next issue, if only because of what the cover art is. 
it was good. But if you're at all anything like me, you got sick of Green Arrow's political crap a long time ago. I'm going to say 6 out of 10 for that one. The Flash, number 244, has some jarringly different artwork, with Wally's kids appearing, well, quite a bit younger than they usually are. I mean, in, you know, than they had already appeared in this series. I don't know, maybe it's part of the plot, considering what happened last issue. The whole thing with the bees is mildly interesting, though Wily's speed being limited by an old sickness is not at all. Pretty average issue, and that's why it gets a 5 out of 10. Robin number 178 was actually a disappointment with the very little forward movement in the spoiler storyline happening at the end. Red Robin making a cursory quick appearance, the usual snarky remarks from Alfred, and, well, just, it was the poor artwork, too. The book did have a few bright moments, like the interactions between Robin and Ragman, but mostly the weird art, bad pacing made this one pretty forgettable. Gonna give this one a 4 out of 10. The Spirit, number 21, so is shirt, uh, Sorry, I turned the volume down accidentally there. Spirit number 21, uh, Sergio Aragon, he's kind of getting into good a good groove with the series. It gives us a funny and exciting story, though sometimes it's a bit too much on the funny side. I suppose Aragon, he's playing to his strengths, if anything, but I still miss Darwin Cook. His presence is sorely missed. There I go with the volume again. Sorry about that. If you didn't hear me, I said his presence is sorely missed. Gotta stop fiddling with this thing. I'll put this down. Six out of ten. Anyway, uh, finally, Titans number five. What can I say? It's all leftover Trigon shit from the first arc. Changeling and Raven, Nightwing and Starfire, and the other members make a quick cameo sitting around doing absolutely nothing. A boring transition between a shitty story and what looks like a rehash of the same shitty story. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10. And it's lucky that I finished early, because um, I didn't get around to everything. Um, a couple of books will have to wait until next week. It looks like I didn't get around to uh, reading Simpsons comics, and I didn't get around to reading Trinity. You can tell why that's low on the list. Also, oh, I, oh man, I was going to review Batman uh, and the Outsiders, and I forgot. So I guess I didn't have to make the reviews quite so short. Finished up in plenty of time to spare. And, and I had something I wanted to say about that book anyway. But anyway, it's good that I f- uh, finished up early because I did want to talk about the recalls. I don't know what the hell is going on with DC Comics. I don't know if they're uh, under a lot of pressure after the controversy from the last issue of uh, Teen Titans. But I mean, I can understand why they recalled goddamn Batman because of all the fucks and cons. I'm all for fucks and cons, by the way, but I don't know. I, I you know, if you're going to black out the words, do it all right. I don't understand. I wanted to talk about Batman and the Outsiders because Green Arrow was getting drunk in that, but apparently Superman can't drink with his dad. Stupid as hell. And if anyone knows why DC Universe decisions got recalled, please let me know because I can't figure it out. Some people think it had might, you know, something to do with the ads, but I don't know. Let me know. Anyway, that's it for this week. See you next week.